All right, welcome to RidingAlong.com. So this is one of my favorite writers, Virginia Woolf. Really, of just any literary figure, I don't, I don't even want to call her a literary figure, uh, just more of a human being who was incredibly honest and prosaic and talented and a wonderful force to have blessed this earth. I can't understate my appreciation for Virginia Woolf, so I'm not making this video in a hurry or anything. If you don't share that enthusiasm, I hope you share it by the end. Uh, if you still don't, unsubscribe. I'm not serious, but really, I mean, it, it, the appreciation for Virginia Woolf I have is something that I would hope you share. Uh, just if you know where it really comes from, I think if you read her, you would might you might find it too. I'm confident to say most people would be inclined to really like her work if they weren't already exposed to her in a very uh, didactic or academic or institutionalized introduction, which is the way a lot of people are introduced to her. I was luck lucky in this sense because I read some of her books uh, when I was really young and younger and I then years later of course and there she was she was the required reading some random essay of hers and then one of her books and it just it don't I don't it couldn't have ever killed my excitement for her but it definitely kind of put a certain halt on it and I really had to step back and question, like, why aren't people talking about her like this? Why are they just breaking her down like she's a, a science? Uh, like she's just this um, geographical location to be picked apart, uh, anal dug up, and uh, analyzed in these clinical ways. Not clinical, but the mental equivalent, perhaps. And that kind of approach to her just seems so boring it just it seemed wrong it seemed incorrect and if you want to write like virginia wolf i really really think uh, you have to almost shatter your sense of self into multiple pieces and i if i could create an image it's the equivalent of just taking a mallet and just uh, slamming it against whatever the self looks like inside your mind, inside your head. And you're going to have all these pieces. You're going to have all these shards, and they're just going to kind of develop into their own. It's weird. It's like this organic kind of uh, beyond visual perception thing that's going on. It's like these little pieces are then going to start developing and growing into voices, and they're not really going to have a physical form. And it's all of those voices speaking together that create the prose of Virginia Woolf, that create the way she writes. I, if I read one of her essays and I read the next one, they, it, I would think it was a completely different writer. I don't think there's any theories that she, she was multiple people in terms of other people claiming her name. I, I really doubt that. But, because there's still a sense of cohesiveness, but she just comes from such a very uh, prolific and almost in terms of self-expression, this very pro prosperous, like never-ending source of like spring water of inspiration. And I know as a writer, she experienced places where she wasn't always inspired. But again, if you want to, if you want to write like her, give it a try. Just whatever it takes for yourself. I don't mean putting yourself to the brink of death, but see what I mean. Split apart whatever your name is, whatever you associate, when someone says your name, I, I can list from the top 10 names in the USA, but I, I'm, what, what's the point? All right, just picture me telling you what other people call you, and you're going to look up, huh? What would you say? Exactly that kind of thing. Take that and just split it into multiple pieces, and from that, you're going to distance different aspects of the same whole, of the same part. And it's like they're going to be wandering around in your mind searching for each other, and they're going to be yelling and uh, conversing. Some are going to find each other, then they're going to get lost again. But they're all just echoing and just kind of, it's all just kind of crescendoing into something that can be put into 
words and can be put onto a page. And from that is, you can't really get into a writer's mind. I can't get into your mind. But it's very fun and just very enjoyable. It's just one of the joys of life that you can have as a writer is looking at other writers and seeing what they did. And not to copy them, but just to try it for yourself now and then, just for your own fun, and see what it's like. And for Virginia Woolf and her text, that's the impression I got. And that's, that's why I'm just kind of, in a sense, obsessed with her work. Uh, because I, I see so many portrayals of it. And it's just disappointing. I People don't really get to always appreciate her for everything that was in her writing because they were just kind of fed something like pre-designed you know, curriculum around Virginia Woolf. And I don't think that's the way to learn her. It's a way, I, get, I suppose. But she wasn't writing to be picked apart by 21st century academics. And when you do that, you just kind of deaden the message. You, you dull it. And there's ultimately just something lost there for yourself. And I hope with this video that it can really just kind of uh, elucidate some of your own personal opinions and perspectives on it. These are all my impressions, right? You might not agree with them. You might not like all of them. That's exactly the point. I want you to find your own. And also, I titled the video not just to straight up lie to people. I, I am giving you uh, how I think you should, you could write like Virginia Woolf. But what I'm saying is you shouldn't try to write like her. I have a video on this for Hemingway too. You don't want to become her if you're a writer. You don't want to aspire to be her. Or else you're never really going to get far because the motivation there isn't really uh, long lasting it's essentially a good learning experience especially if you're starting out and you don't even know where to begin go ahead if, if you like virginia Woolf, try to <laughs> try to come from where she was coming from and, and see what you learn you're gonna end up at a kind of a crossroads go down a path that is you're gonna find out you're just copying and pasting and it's, you're never going to be able to say anything on your own because you won't have the resources, you won't have the tools, you won't have any mental ability, abilities to say it on your, in your own way. Or you can take what you learned from this writer, from other writers, and imbue them into your own approach. And that's the only way you'll be able to really say what's going on in your head. And that's what it's all about. I... Don't make these videos for people who just want to only think about writing, for people who just want to procrastinate about it and not actually do it. I don't make these videos for people who are much more happy to have someone distract them from the fact that they should be writing than to actually do it. I make these videos for people who are looking for something to just kind of challenge the way they see things, to get a new perspective. It's not to be the... This is the authoritative final say on everything, writing and everything Virginia will, you know, like everything, every author I mentioned and every literary tech. It's not at all. It's not even close. But she's a very uh, accessible, in the terms that you can find her stuff anywhere. I mean, walk into any bookstore, any library, you'll, you'll, you can pick up a copy, probably not even for much. You can walk into a thrift store and I bet you'll find among that um, the shelf with all kinds of stuff that doesn't get read. But because it's just such a very mass printed uh, figure, you know, you're gonna you're gonna come across them. You'll be able to grab one of her books, and I find her stuff incredibly hard to really break through. Maybe you have a higher reading comprehension than I do. I know it's ironic, right? The channel about writing is one of my flaws, right? I, I suck at reading comprehension and that influences my style in that maybe you're great at reading comprehension. That might influence your style. Virginia, well, I spend, I don't know if you have this same experience. I spend maybe five minutes. This might sound crazy, but I'm serious. I spend five minutes on one page. 
I technically I could just read through it and be like, okay, cool. Reading this happened, this happened. Okay, cool. We get to the point. But I, I want to like break through and see what she's saying. I, the structure is very, sometimes it, it forces me to like focus. And I, I honestly believe her works built my attention span. Like solely, I owe every, my entire attention span to her works. And after finishing one, it took me a year to finish one of her books. Among doing other things in life, but I, the effect after and just the feeling after and what I, how my perspectives have, have changed and widened and I, I just think a little differently in some ways, in some aspects. And there's always those writers that do that for you. It, it's been totally worth it. So, and again, this is one of my greater inspirations. This is one of my, the people that I appreciate, you know, the human beings I appreciate for having existed and Yet it has nothing to do with the way I write. I don't write like Virginia Woolf at all. And that's what these video series are about, how to write like. Just because you like a writer doesn't mean you should write like them. But again, if you do, if you want to, give it a try. I'm adding this into the end again because a lot of people skip to the end. What you want to do is take a look at your identity, your sense of self, break it into pieces, and then listen to what those pieces say. They're screaming in your head. They're yelling about, and they all have these uh, conflicting tonalities. They're searching. They are finding. They are meeting. They are uh, commingling. They are all this stuff. And listen to what they say. <laughs> this, is, this is not a form of madness. I mean, you're not going to lose your mind doing it. But I think from that kind of exercise mentally, you're going to kind of get an idea of where she was coming from and you'll be able to kind of do it for yourself. It's fun to do, uh, again, especially if you're starting out. And if you want to write a book, if you really do, check out on my website, writingalong.com, how to write a book in 30 days, a 10-part guide to really get you started. Uh, some really valuable stuff there. All right, so I'll see you around in the next episode and uh, tell me what you love about Virginia Woolf or tell me your own perspectives on her. Again, like an authoritative statement on her. I'd like to hear what you have to say about her too. If you appreciate her, if you don't like her, have you were introduced to her and what your opinions are on her. All right, I'll see you around.